I need to switch my peace, mind. peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. That's Damien, and we've got a guest on the show today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey everyone, how we doing today? Uh, my name is Jace, also known as Sky Big 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 Brother. Um, I've been <laughs> in Miss Martial Arts since about '99. My first UFC event was UFC '94. A headliner by the name of the one and only Sugar Rashad Evans and Thiago, now in Miami Dade County Jail, Silva. <laughs> <laughs> I like that nickname. <laughs> appreciate it yeah so he's been watching it since like he said 99 probably even before then if you really think about it like you were watching it on cds weren't you i was I used to go back you know when there was something called blockbuster you know <laughs> have to go to the, the back section or you know keep it 100 uh chinese uh stores you have to go to the adult section and get the old ufc discs as well you had the faces of death just now you just you know, get at the top of the fingertips on the internet. Did they really have it in the adult section? Or are you just being funny? No, they really had it in the adult section. It was <laughs> I mean, you gotta remember John McCain, he got b- b- banned for a little bit. Ah. Yeah. Well. Shout out to them. So we we'll we'll in this hole. <laughs> what got you into MMA? Like what what did it for you? What was your moment? For sure. I think for me, it was just pure intrigue. Um, You know, if I'm being 100, I don't really have a propensity for violence. Um, (laughs) But in the same breath, you know, seeing two different forms of uh, martial arts, see who's the best, the competition, you know. And that's something I try to explain to the novice now is that... um, mixed martial arts is not about violence you know it's actually not that violence more technique and i think the more and more that the ufc and i guess now even espn explains that to the layman the more and more broad it will become and really start hitting mainstream right so for you it's more about the technique and the art of combat sports and competing versus you know, oh, I want to see this guy done for laying face down on the mat. Stunned. <laughs> I, want see, I want to see him face down on the mat. Face down. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm here for both. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Well, welcome to the podcast, man. Good to have you. I'm sure you have a lot of great insight. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, man. I just want to contribute. Yeah. So, anyways, yep. He got me into MMA when uh, the first fight that you ever had me watch was John Jones versus DC. And I did not want to watch it. We went to a bar and everything. Are you still there, pussy? (laughs) I'm still here, John. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just talk about this for a second, right? Like, who who answers to that? My man, do you answer that? that? Someone's like, you there, pussy? I thought about this plenty times over. I'm like, why did he even, like, feed into that? He just set him up and he just took the talk to ollie you for him and it's just like i don't understand why he said that but at the same time i feel like john jones just is that nigga you know he just he's the one that pulls you out of character a little bit <laughs> and he did that he did the scum of the earth john <laughs> they said yeah I'm i wish they let me next door so i was <laughs> in your fucking face the way that he answered it you though you spit in my face I would absolutely. You yeah. think I would let you spit on me? <laughs> okay. No, no, no yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> I said I would kill you. Kill you. you think I would just let you kill me, John? Bruh. John pretty much could have killed him in the octagon there <laughs> in their last fight. Yeah, he was done for. I think that um, you know the UFC. I, I think this is the moment where the UFC kind of like besides Connor kind of went mainstream because with them like getting to that scrap on stage you know what i mean mm-hmm. and then that hot mic interview and because that went viral yeah you know? yeah yeah I, so i remember being at the bar watching it not really being entertained not really being into it and then i remember when ronda rousey came on the scene jace was so excited 
he's like, you, you gotta see this girl. I mean, you, you could fight. Like, and I was like, no, I don't want to watch her. I don't want to see anything about this. Like, I, I don't like it. And then now fast forward to now, now I'm like, are you watching this? Like, I'm going absolutely <laughs> crazy the whole time. Um, yeah, that's but how I'm it watching is. That's it why I love this sport. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm watching So who's it the first life. one that like brought you into the fray? Uh, the first fight that I actually watched and like got into would I've always heard of like Anderson Silva and saw his highlights and stuff, but it didn't really like draw me in as uh, watching Conor McGregor talk shit to like Jose Aldo and like taking his belt and stuff and doing this and that because I was watching as like, oh, wow, this guy is really arrogant. I hope he gets his ass whooped, mm -hmm. you know, and then he went out there and did what he did to Jose Aldo. And I was like damn like okay that's when he made me a fan of his i was like okay he was talking that shit but he started backing it up you know and i went back and watched like a bunch of old ufc footage and the only person that was really talking shit was like chel sonnen but he was doing it almost like respectfully as like you know i'm just joking around like at the end of the day it's a fight <laughs> you know but connor took it to the next level where like no nah, i'm gonna whoop your ass in there and embarrass you and make you look like you didn't deserve to be in there with me Thanks. and that's like that's like what got me not liking him because i was like oh man this man's arrogant as hell like i'm i'm a humble guy myself so i like the humble fighters pretty much um but i saw him talking shit i was like oh i i, I need to see that man with his ass beat and then I, I watched the fight live at a bar with my cousin, and we were just shook. We were just absolutely shook at the outcome. And ever since then, I was like, okay, like let me let me pay attention to this guy, right? So I started watching only like Conor McGregor type fights, and then it, after his next fight, I think I don't remember who he fought. I, I don't know if it was uh, Eddie Alvarez that he fought next. But ever since then, was, ever since he fought Adi Alvarez, I was hooked and started watching all the fights. Like, literally haven't missed okay, so here, like a fight night since then. Here's a question uh, for the both of you. Who's the best MMA trash tracker of all time? Hmm. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to go with Chael. Because he started You're gonna it. You're going to go with Chael? In my opinion. Because he go, started it. Like, yeah. I'm going to go with Connor. I'm going to go with Connor just because I feel like he really brings that mental warfare and people really be feeling disrespected after after fucking with him. You know what I mean? Okay, like we're going to talk like, about. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about like Dustin Poirier, like Dustin Poirier and him were all nice and buddy buddy the first fight. And then the second fight, Connor started bringing that heat and that energy and it brought Dustin out of character where he was like, oh, like, nah, he started. <laughs> You know what I mean? Retaliating with, with some of the shit that he was saying. He was like, oh, you're going to bring my family into this? Like, no, nah, I'm in there to hurt you. And you know what I mean? So, yeah, I got to say, Connor, simply for the mental warfare aspect of it. Oh, like, you're talking for, about Jolene? To what? set up the fight. <laughs> so for me, if uh, we're, we're talking about trash and just being straight out disrespectful, shout out to my boy Kobe Covington. Stop it. Saying your boy, oh, come oh, shot yeah. Shamayev. Come on. This is gold. <laughs> His name's John. not Cumshot? John. Are, are you sure his name's not Cumshot? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not Cumshot. Yeah, tomato, oh. tomato. <laughs> yeah, I that was classic. You know what's funny? <laughs> you just recently have decided to jump on the Kobe train. Like, you liked him and you respected him as a fighter, but now all of a sudden you're like, I love him. He's must-see TV. And I'm like, I hate Covington. Why Kobe is, is must-see TV. You know, I, I did dislike him at first, too. But now, as a fan of the sport, like I'm glad he's around. To be honest, he makes it fun. He kind of makes it fun, and anytime I, anytime he's fighting, like I'm gonna see the fight and I'm gonna watch the press conference because I know this fool's about to say some wild ass shit, and <laughs> I'm here for it. You know, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see your ass be in there. <laughs> and what you say does not end in the octagon. That's why that man got snuck. Mm -hmm. And then acting all surprised about it. Yeah, and suing the him. way that he just the way that he just acts surprised about it too like oh well, i never <laughs> it's like brad you had yeah, this shit coming bro i'm gonna keep it 100 that's some bitch shit because your boy had his chance in the octagon got dealt with he did and 100 percent. and the reality is is he knew who he was dealing with and after the mm -hmm. fight if you go back and you watch thrill and agony after the fight 
uh, what's his name? Kobe is talking about, hey man, if I see you in the street, it's on site. If I see, this is after he beat up Jorge. He's in the octagon mm -hmm. telling him, if I see you in the street, it's on site. Hey, on site means on site, whether you see me or not. Like, deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. Yeah. Hey. Some straight prison yard. Hey. Shit. But that's the type of energy that he brings, so you got to keep it, you know, 24-7. You can't turn it on and off. It's like, hey, if I'm talking shit, I mean that shit. Like, you see me out, don't say what's up to me. Don't be buddy-buddy. Because I feel like Kobe's actually that guy who, like, would talk shit and then see somebody out in public and, like, go up and try to shake their hand and talk to them. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. Keep that same energy, and, you know? You talking that shit, yeah. like, you bound to get hit. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm kind of again. Jorge got dealt with, man. You know, he had his chance. He to did. His paws on him, talking all this shit about oh, I'm gonna baptize this, baptize that. Mm -hmm. Nigga, when's the last time you won a fight? Like, let's keep it one thousand. <laughs> Damn. When's the last time he won a fight? Diaz. Does uh, anyone have um a I think solar Diaz, calendar? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Wait, did he fight Diaz before or after uh, uh, Karate Man? Um, Stephen Thompson? That... Yeah, when was it? Oh, he fought him after? Mm -hmm. That was before, but he fought Nate Diaz Stephen after. Thompson beat him. Stephen Thompson, Stephen Thompson won that fight. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, bro, I'm tripping. I'm thinking about uh, Anthony Pettis right now for some reason. Oh, that's like Anthony. that's like the replay that I got in my head right now for some oh, reason. <laughs> yeah, the one hit a quitter. I think that even uh, what you gonna call it, uh, Nate and Jorge fought in what 2019. It was before, yeah, before the, the lockdown, pandemic, right? Yeah, it was the BMF title, mm -hmm. and that's what got him the championship fight. Yeah. But um, speaking Wish. of being Warner Boy, how do you think? Uh, cause um, we know that you know oh, Warner oh, Boy yeah. is your guy. You love Warner Boy. Um, how do you think he's gonna do against Holland? Mm. Warner Boy's gonna be the brakes off of him. What you think so? Stop it. No, so hey, listen up, everyone. Bet the fucking house. <laughs> Wait, what makes you say that though? What makes you say that? For sure. Like what? I mean, like what about Kevin Holland? Like you, you don't, you don't see him like moving well on his feet. Like what makes you think that he's just gonna outpoint him or like outstrike him like that? For sure. First of all, I think Kevin Holland is a overrated striker. Ah, hot Fix your face now. Hot fucking Fix your face now. Let me close right. my job. I'm, I'm he's listening. Going there with Ace. <laughs> He's about to go there with a striking specialist, mm -hmm. right? He's never fought anyone, you know, like Stephen Thompson, who's coming in there with precise punches, kicks, leg kicks, head kicks. You know what I mean? And I think that we have to realize that Stephen Thompson hasn't fought someone who doesn't just want to lay on top of him and fucking ground hump him for ages. Mm -hmm. So then I asked, like, what's Kevin Holland's path to victory? Out striking a striker? Nope. <laughs> well, I could see Kevin um, grappling a little bit. I mean, Kevin he does better. have some grappling skills, even though you know the last showcase wasn't Did really you see doing his last him fight? justice. <laughs> his his last showcase wasn't really doing him justice, but hey, he was scrambling for a little bit and like he was doing the right things. He just, you know, comes out is just better, <laughs> just way Kamsat's better. Come shot or comes out? Shut up. How do you pronounce it? No, he's being funny. He's calling him cum shot. Cause that's what yeah, Kobe I know. Cum yeah, just, man, that's listen. The funniest line ever. Listen, I like Kevin. You know how much I like Kevin Holland. I stood out in the Arizona sun to take a fucking picture with him. Like, mm -hmm. I like Kevin, but I don't know. Like, Damien and I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is the elite of the elite when it comes to striking, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be. Really and is. he's a point fighter, right? So, like you were saying, um, with him being a point fighter, I think, and I keep saying it, Kevin Holland swears that he's go going to only strike with him. Don't do it. Eat nuts. <laughs> Grapple. 
Not eat nuts. <laughs> hey, eat nuts. Take them down. Do what you got to do. But don't try to sit up there and strike with this man because he, because we for we have forgotten after seeing him against Gilbert and seeing him against um, what's his name, Muhammad, Muhammad mm-hmm. Bilal. So like, yeah, we have forgotten like seeing him on like when he comes out in that karate stance and he's light on his feet and he's pop 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 like just remember his. Sorry, I was gonna say remember his fight against Vicente. Yes, mm-hmm. and Vicente is a striker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Cold do we striker. think that Kevin but, Holland is the same uh, caliber? But, Ke- as but Kevin Holland is tall and long, though. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be the decisive maker right here. Where I feel like Stevens normally the longer and more agile fighter, so he's able to move in and out. But as he's moving out, Kevin Holland's still long, and I feel like it's going to take it's going to take Steven a little time to like adjust to that length. Cause I feel like he hasn't seen that in this division in a long time. Cause Kevin Holland is a long, lengthy guy, you know? And I feel like that's why he finds success with his striking, honestly. So I feel like Steven is going to try to outpoint him, but actually get caught on the way out with something hard. And it's going to, and it's going to like, I'm seeing it in my head right now. <laughs> I'm getting so descriptive because I'm seeing it happen play out live in my head. <laughs> Where Stephen Stephen Thompson's gonna try to slide in and out, and I feel like on his way out he's gonna get caught with like a cross or something, and it's, he's gonna get wobbled and stunned, and I think that's gonna be you know the the pivotal moment of the fight where it's gonna start to go downhill because he's coming off of so many losses now in a row that it's kind of like is that gonna mess with his mental a little bit? Like is he gonna be the same Stephen? He's also getting a little bit older. You know what I mean? And Kevin is hungry, I feel like. Even though he, like, considered himself retired, like, what? <laughs> a month before this fight was announced? Like, right. chill, bro. We all we already knew that this fool wasn't going to be retiring, though. Right. Does Kevin Holland have any career knockouts? Do you not remember uh, Jacare yeah. Sosa? Off the yeah, back? Yeah, Jacare Sosa on top of him. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Finished, facts, him like a, finished him like a fucking video game. Just bop. <laughs> Bruh, yeah. Retired that uh, We ain't never seen that. We ain't never seen see, something like that. Not, did, did you miss him knocking out the knockout of the year, uh, Hakeem Buckley? When he knocked out ha- mm-hmm. um, Buckley before Buckley did that uh, spinning back kick? Yeah. Before the spinning nothing, back kick, Buckley. So let me get this straight. Y'all two are both taking Kevin to beat Steven. I'm, I'm taking, I'm I taking Kevin. I want him to win. I want Holland Let's to win. Let's run it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking Kevin. Dude, I think Kevin's going to get it done. And, like, I like I like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I feel like he's a phenomenal striker, one of my favorite fighters to watch. But I feel like Kevin Holland is, like, this is his his comeback fight to where we remember, like, oh, shit, Kevin Holland does be, de- lo- deserve to belong up here with the killers and shit. So that's how I'm feeling about it. I'm I've, After been watching – these fights and stuff there's certain people that can keep that high level of performance as they're getting older people like let's say uh we were just talking about him like a podcast ago our, our andre Avlarski, mm-hmm. right he's getting up he's getting up in age but he's kind of like he's still hanging you know what i mean like he's not mm-hmm the best but he's still he's still winning and he's still putting on great fights and like getting hit hard but you know finding persevering and pushing forward but then there are some fighters like frankie frankie edgar where you like you see the downfall and it's like ah man like it's almost time to hang it up you know okay and, no it's time i feel like question i gotta ask y'all who got knocked out worse frankie edgar or tony ferguson frankie mm. Mm. because he got knocked out three times that- in a row yeah, no, no, but that Tony Ferguson though last, one, um, the last that that Tony that Ferguson one that was bad. You're talking he, about the kick to the he, chin for yeah, Tony, yeah, right? Yeah, not the. Yes. There's only one. yeah, not. <laughs> there's, only one. there's only one. Yeah. Oh man, me and I mean, Sky was uh, me and Sky we were at the fight live, and you know after mm-hmm. we like had this moment of like staring at each other and like holy shit. You know, and then we're trying to get our heart rate down. And then the next thing, we're like, <laughs> oh, this motherfucker still hasn't moved. And yeah, that, it was scary. The jubilant feeling we had was like, oh, this nigga fucking died. Oh my God. And then, like, my heart sank. My stomach got physically ill. Scott, how was it for you? Yeah, I was 
devastated. I just remember, like, we were like, damn, Tony finally won a round. He's looking good. Second round starts. <laughs> boom. I just grabbed him, and I was like, oh, I could not, like, I could not breathe. And then, like, when he wasn't moving and wasn't getting up, I was like, oh, my God. Like, they're, are they going to cancel the event? Like, what happens here? Like, what? what? <laughs> You want to see a dead body? Yeah, I think, like, you know, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the camera cut yeah, cut from him shot. real quick because of the way he was laying there like that. <laughs> they did. They didn't. They didn't show you know what had happened. So yeah, like in reality, that knockout was super super brutal. It was way worse than Frankie. But like that, the knee that that's Frankie Michael Chandler had, throwing that too. Ooh, a ball you know what I mean? Muscle. Like, bruh, he threw that a hundred percent body weight behind that kick. <laughs> yeah, like, sheesh. And when he on the podcast, you hear them talking about like, oh, like Frank Edgar kid is right behind us. Oh, my God. And I was just yeah. like, oh, my God. Did yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Which one is sadder? Yeah. Yeah. I got to go with Frankie. Like, that's a damn. And, and for like, you're, you're leaving. You're leaving fight to your farewell. Damn. Bro. Should fighters bring their kids? Young children will say under the age of 13. To their fights i don't know man because ever since i started competing like my first fight i invited everybody they were like it was such a big deal to me but then fighting and knowing that they were there i felt like a another wave of pressure on me right because i don't want to like disappoint them but my fights since then i haven't invited pretty much anybody and it felt a lot better so i always say what Israel Adesanya said, like, leave them at home. Like, they could come to the next one. That's not really that important. You know what I mean? Maybe to, like, a fight night type of fight. But, yeah, to, like, a championship level or a pay-per-view car type fight, maybe not. Because there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of emotions flying around, I'm sure. Uh, that, that, uh, that, that apex is small and quiet, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, you it is. It is. <laughs> You're right. You, you don't want to be there for that. <laughs> Sky, do you think <laughs> fighters should bring their kids? Um, I think people have done crazier stuff in front of their kids. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, yeah, speak on it. <laughs> so you know, my thing is, is that like, like it's happening. Like, what are we shielding them from? You know, oh, mom or dad getting knocked out. I mean, you're gonna see it. It's gonna be on the TV. Mm -hmm. Like these kids have iPads and phones at two and three years old, they know how to operate this stuff and see stuff and look up stuff. So it's like, they may not be there in person to see it, but at the same time, it's like, is it devastating for the kid? Absolutely. How do you think Kamara, like Kamara Usman's daughter was shook seeing her dad like just stiff, eyes wide open on the... <laughs> so, Everyone you know... look, I'm a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But you know what I mean? So should they? If it were me, no, I, no, I would not. But like, if they do like, Hey, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, as long as you, you know, as long as you know that your kid can see you laid out there looking crazy. Yep. That's yeah. And that's fine. I feel like it's fine for them to see it. But as the fighter, I feel like I wouldn't invite them because of that extra load yeah. of pressure and everything. I feel like, you know, yeah. because it's so like, I don't want them to so see that live. <laughs> I don't want them to see me laid out live, like Who you know is what I mean. The closest um, family member you have ever had come out to your fight? My fiance, yeah, she comes. Well, she came to my first one. That actually, she didn't come to my first one. That I that I won in street beefs, but she came to my second and third one, and I lost those. Mm. And I don't. I'm not trying to say it's on her She's or anything at all. But I mean, it it could like you know the way that it's shaping up to be. It's like, man, why am I? <laughs> why when you hear cheering me on in my corner, I'm not performing as well. Like, <laughs> right. I don't know. It's weird. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, how did you uh, lose those contests? Oh, so my first fight was a kickboxing or a Muay Thai match, which that's what I actually went to school for and I trained for. Uh, my second and I won that fight my second fight was a boxing match I had signed up for kickboxing the guy that I fought had signed up for MMA and so they tried to put me in an MMA match and I was like no nah, I didn't sign up for that like I don't even do MMA I'm not about to be out here looking looking crazy 
you know so <laughs> me and him both agreed on boxing come to find out that he was like the boxing champion and this will had he weighed in at 186 i weighed in at 168 <laughs> so there was Damn. that too the fix and i was like up. and and it was like either fight him or like, you know, we don't have anybody for you to fight. And I had traveled to Vegas for this. So I was like, you know what? Like, fuck it. I've been training. Like, wow. I, I box. It's not like I just kickbox. I box too. So I'll get in there, you know. And it went to a decision. I took a couple of knockdowns and, you know, stuff like that. But, I mean, in retrospect, the dude had 20 pounds on me. So he should have done that as as the boxing champion at the time too. So, you know, I don't even look past that. Like, that that fight was a fluke to me. And then the next fight I had was against the champion that actually beat him to gain the championship. Uh, so he was actually supposed to fight the champion dude and then called out. And they, they hit me up like, hey, man, are you willing to take this fight on two weeks notice? I was like, hey, when the, when the opportunity arises, you take it, you know. So, you know, I stepped to the plate, but I got TKO'd in the first round. Which, you know, it happens. I'm not a boxer and I don't claim to be a boxer. You know, I, I kickbox. Like, that's that's what I do, so. Now, yeah. what is, like, the, like, a couple of fundamental different, obviously, we know in kickboxing you're kicking, right? But, like, as mm -hmm. an athlete who has competed in both boxing and kickboxing, what were, like, to, like some of, like, the fundamental differences, like, once you had to transition from kickboxing to boxing that, like, you really noticed? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's more of like your stance and your posture, how you're throwing your shots. Because when you're in kickboxing, you're you're kind of lighter on your on your lead leg, right? So you're able to check kicks, you're able to like throw kick counters and stuff like that. With boxing, you can pretty much go wild with your hands. You know, you can move your head a lot more. In kickboxing, you can't move your head. You're more exactly. of a stationary target. Right, because you don't want to dip into a, a head kick or something, because that will really fuck you up. Even if you block it, Axe, you're on. gonna be fucked up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, even, even when you block those, like you're gonna be fucked up. So that's one thing that I learned about boxing too is is the head movement. Like you you gotta utilize it. It's there for a reason. When someone's throwing hands, it's it's less dangerous to move your head. Is pretty much what I've gained from it. Like number one thing is yeah, in boxing, move your head, and kickboxing. Try not to move your head so much. That's pretty much the difference. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, how is the timing different? You know, because there's almost a dance, right? When mm -hmm. you uh, are, are, are fighting someone. How is the timing different from uh, boxing to kickboxing? Yeah. Well, boxing, you're throwing hands, right? So I kind of know of two places to watch. I'm watching your shoulders, I'm watching your upper body because I know you're gonna move your shoulders in order to throw your hands. With kickboxing, you have to look at both of the levels. You have to look at the the shoulders and you have to look at the legs, right? So that's that's a major difference. In boxing, you can kind of you can kind of read more and see what's gonna come or predict better, right? Because with kickboxing, you have more setups. You can use the hands to set up the kick you can use the legs to come and set up the hands, you know? And if you notice somebody is real kicking heavy, they're, they're throwing a lot of kicks, that's when you utilize your boxing to counter that. You can get in close and just start throwing hands, you know? Uh, yeah, there's, there's differences in between each sport and I've come to respect that now that I've trained in each sport uh, and competed in each sport. So, you know, it, it, it's really dope. I really sway towards the kickboxing side, though. It, it's just funner for me because my personal fighting style is is kind of like Israel Adesanya's where he's like fainting a lot and he's showing you things and watching how you react and then starting to build off of those things. And then I'm seeing what you're throwing. I'm trying to make a mental image of like a like a note of what you're throwing, how you're throwing it, where you putting your hands at and stuff like that. And it, it, it's it's. I, I like kickboxing because you're a little bit more patient in my head. At least I am. I'm a little more patient because I'm trying to read you. So if you watch my, my kickboxing fight, you can see I've had a lot of people tell me like, oh, they thought I was going to lose because I was starting off so slow. The dude was like, you know, going off, throwing hands, throwing kicks, trying to light me up. 
Meanwhile, I'm blocking and I'm taking these I'm taking these photos like, oh, okay, you're doing that, you're doing that, you're doing that. And then the second round comes out and I'm like a new, whole new person, right? Because I'm like, okay, I made those reads and now it's time to, in that short 60 second in the corner, I then came up with a little game plan to start countering what you're throwing because I, you pretty much showed your whole, your full hand of cards trying to, trying to throw everything in the first round, trying to knock me out pretty much. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah. That's the thing. That's why I like kickboxing because I feel like I could take my time to like make reads more, and I have more opportunity to, to show you things and, and fake you out. If that makes sense, like boxing, you're throwing hands, so it's either like left hand, right hand, left hand, left hand, right hand. You know, with kickboxing, it's you know right hand, left body kick, left hook, right hand, teep, trip you, clinch you. You know what I mean? It, there is a lot more that can happen. So I think that's probably why I, I like Muay Thai so much. <laughs> I My last class, I just learned how to like foot sweep. Like if we're if we're like in uh, punching or kicking range, I can like fake a jab, get closer to you and sweep your foot to make you off balance and then mm. follow up with like some strikes with the hands. Bing, 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 you know. <laughs> I, I love it I, I could go on on and on about this shit nice. we're gonna be here too long <laughs> nice. you know what i will say that um right when i had learned who rod tang was was right mm. after you had that fight where that guy did that rock rod tang shit to you where like he just put his hands down like in the middle of the scrapping shit oh yeah 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 that was mm -hmm. spicy but yeah one thing that, that was i disrespectful. will say yeah, because he had that really weight was. on me, and he knew he yeah. he had that weight on me, and he knew because he knew that weight in that. So, you yeah. know, his, my punches probably felt like pillow punches to him, and I was trying to knock him out. I was hitting him as hard as I could, but obviously, twenty pounds like that's a big difference. So here's something really interesting that came out today. The owner of One FC came out and said that the only cross promotion that he would do is with the UFC because all of his champions would run through all of Bellator's champions. Mm. What do you guys think about that? Like, so the one MMA champions compared to um, Bellator, like how do you think cross promotion will go in general with all of them? I would like to see some cross promotion. Um, I kind of agree with that. I feel like Bellator's fighters are kind of like more like, I don't even know like the right phrase to use but I feel like their fighters are not to the degree of the UFC standards or 1FC because that's what we're talking about, right? 1FC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they, they got some killers over there. And I know that Bellator got some killers, right? Because we got Michael Chandler from Bellator. We got, you know, a few fighters and the UFC actually gave them a few fighters. But those fighters that bellator got from the ufc those fighters were done with the ufc right yeah, the ufc were, were like nah bro like Ooh. you kind of you kind of lack in we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and let you be a free agent for a little bit um so i i kind of agree with that sentiment but yeah i think i think cross promotion would be dope that's like <clears throat> real live like street fighter like i'm a i'm a gamer right so street fighter is like best fighters from all around the world mm -hmm. which you know you all, all of these different fight promotions have fighters from all around the world, but to do it all in one, like a big ass cross promotion where you can really see who the best fighter of the world is, that would be super dope. What about you, Jason? So I totally disagree with that statement. I mean, you got some absolute fucking dogs in Bellator. That. You know, obviously, we've got uh, Usman, uh, Habib's cousin. He's now 16 and 0. Saw him take out uh, Fiera, brother of Pep Bull. Yeah. Um, you got AJ McKee. Uh -huh. AJ McKee is a monster, an absolute uh -huh. dog. You know, uh, I wish, though, overall, we would have way more cross promotion when I think about. You know, the UFC doesn't like to talk about it, but they were trying to do pro, 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 cross promotion, and they did back in the day when they sent Chuck Liddell to Japan in the interim in the Pride Tournament. You know, that was the first time within MMA that we ever really seen that cross promoting, you know, uh, and didn't work out that well for Chuck, who was at the time the UFC's big shiny dick, you know, it'd be <laughs> prior to. Uh, 
Izzy, you know what I'm saying, getting uh, slept or, you know, shall we say doing the mummy, a little sleepwalking. He was awake, but he was definitely <laughs> sleeping, you know, for them to send them over to one and then the one champion like beats them, right? Like, yeah, I think the UFC, I think the UFC is scared and not to mention it doesn't necessarily help them as well, no. right? Like if no. you were the big shiny like cock in the room, why would you want to give other smaller people uh, any type of shine, any type of, of rub? You know what I mean? Um, uh-huh. But yeah, but for I me think personally, also, um, you think it would be competitive? Oh, one hundred percent. But I think you but, take the top champions of all are, the organizations. But they need to be drug tested. Mm-hmm. one is not drug tested the way that they are here, you know, and you mm. then have to go to like a unified rules of no knees to a grounded opponent because like right. once you add in knees to a grounded, we see what happened to DJ, even though DJ got right. it back, you know what I mean? Like, so there's a, you know, there's a slight difference in that. And like, come on now, like Alistair Overeem, that man don't look the same. He didn't fight the same after you saw the came in, you saw the end of his career. The Reem, the best physique I've ever seen in my life when a human, when yeah. him and Brock <laughs> were standing next to each other and he made Brock look small, unfucking real. Speaking of that, did I tell you that I, that I, that Chuck Liddell was there this weekend? Oh, yeah. No. Damn, Ice what man. a legend. Yeah. Right there. What a legend. Eating was he everything. still punk drunk? Um, he, he was just drunk drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the next time y'all get bored, the next time y'all get bored, go check out. Um, I can't think of the number, but it was UFC in Atlanta when uh, Chuck fought um, Rashad, and Rashad just fucking hit him with the fucking classic high school overhand right that connected and sent Chuck Liddell to Narnia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely have to look that one up and check it out. And then also, I seen you know the new champion Zhang Wei Li, looking like a killer. Mm-hmm. She looks like a killer. Per usual. Yes, but I'm, like I really mess with her, man. Like, yeah, she she, she looked good. Um, this weekend's cards was actually pretty good. If you guys checked it out, um, the fighter that we have been yeah, talking about it. for the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, Natalia Sil- uh, Silva, spinning back. Fi- Spinning back kick to the face. Did y'all see that? Wait, was oh. she on? She wasn't on the main car. She was on the prelim. She was the first to open up the prelim. Yeah, you're going to go back and watch it. Oh yeah, I had to watch that one. I didn't. I only saw the main car for that one, and then yeah. I saw that Derek Lewis fight dropped out, and that sucked. Yeah, that sucked. That sucked. I wanted to see Damn. Derek or somebody go to sleep in that little octagon. <laughs> I wanted to. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was uh, making a terrible life choice of uh, I just moved from the the oppressive heat of Phoenix, Arizona. It's not even hot no more. Where'd you move to? Summer. <laughs> it gets better. I got here just in time. One might even say Christmas came early um to move to rochester minnesota which today it was a very spicy seven degrees hell no seven degrees that's <laughs> too it's it. too early it's too it's november still ain't no way it should be seven degrees right now sheesh <laughs> the cold out here is there's levels yeah, just like yeah this, levels you went from one polar opposite to the next Bro, I'm a nah. glutton for punishment. I don't know what else to say. I got a, I got a good feeling about Kevin Holland. Watch, y'all gonna be shocked. I feel like y'all gonna be <laughs> shocked. Be like, Damien okay, was talking so about this man. Do. <laughs> here's what we gotta do. We gotta start having, um, you know, like they do on a first take, betting some some Mountain Dew, you know, something to keep it light, <laughs> something to keep it light. But uh, you know. Be like, yo, you got to come on here with, like, um, some eyeliner on, you know. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, we, we can do that, though. Because what I'm not going to do is take shots anymore. Because a while ago, we had, um, when I had to have uh, Danny came on, and we decided to, like, make picks. And, like, we had to take shots for the losers. But, like, I forgot that, like, I'm not 21 anymore. And so all of a sudden, like, having to take three shots back to back, that was not it. 
That was uh, not it. Oh, was it not like, it uh, then or was it not it tomorrow? No, it was then. It was then because I still had to come back and edit the podcast. <laughs> and I was like, mm, I mean, I'm feeling a little toasty. Like, this is a bit much. Um, yeah, but, you know, there aren't any fights going on this weekend. So, and we already recapped UFC 281. So this weekend, you know, you get an opportunity to sit back, relax, and enjoy your family time. You can catch up on some old fights. Catch you know, up on some old too. fights. Yeah, you know, we have UFC 282. See Rashad put Chuck Liddell to sleep. Yes, <laughs> go back and watch some pride fights. Like, because that's, that's a whole other level of violence going on there. Um, but, yeah, so take the time this weekend. Watch some old fights, you know. Check out some Kevin Holland fights and come back to the podcast next week and let us know what you guys are thinking. Um, heading into the fight night inside of Orlando. That should be cool. Mm. Um, they got some pretty good people that's going to be on this card, so... If we just take a quick little look, they have Barbarina. Brian Barbarina is Barbarina. must see action. Dos Rafael Anos? Dos Anos? Oh, let's exactly. go. You know, Taito Ivasa? Get him. Oh, yeah. shit. This is a nice little Shui. card. Shui. Derek Brunson fighting? Eric exactly. Ant? Wow. And this it's is a gonna fight. It's going to be the most night. boring fight on earth. Nico Price? What? Why they got Nico on a prelim against Phil Rowe? Like, that's going to be a banger. Angela, Angela Hill. Hill, Clay Guida, <laughs> wow. Clay Guida. This is a full ass card. Yeah, Michael, Michael Johnson. Johnson. Wow. Yeah. Michael Johnson. Oh, Bruh, this is a full ass card. That's what is I'm this saying. the one coming up this week? No, next weekend. Tracy no Cortez. Fight. I mean, next, yeah, this, this okay. coming, yeah. Let me ask y'all. I got you. Y'all really Damn. think Tracy is that hot? If y'all oh, can't answer, blink twice. <laughs> <laughs> You can't answer, I'll beat the beat up. <laughs> I'm just saying, I it's I don't like I you know it's just not my. That's what um. Uh, everybody that's like with, her. That's what uh, uh Brian Ortega's lady, right? Yeah, that's his fiance. Yeah, she cute. I would say she's be, cute. Yeah, they be going crazy over. Oh, she get this work. They do. <laughs> they be going her. crazy over. I feel like they be yeah, going crazy over a lot of the women is fighters the, though. The best looking girl in MMA. Mm. I would have. I would say Rachel Ostovich back when she was competing. Oh, isn't she on OnlyFans now? <laughs> no, she. I think she's a bare knuckle UFC fighter now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna um, give my shit to 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 Paige. Yeah, I. I don't but know. she got some work done though. She got uh, some work done though. She can get this work as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. Like, cause, cause I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. Dimitri, do you have? Listen, anything? I'm telling y'all right now that um, that Jack fight with um, scroll up. Jack Hermanson. Jack, Jack Hermanson yeah. and Derek, Derek Brunson. Brunson. Take a nap. Go for a walk. You know, watch. You think so? Dry. Hell, have Morgan Freeman talk you through masturbation. It'll be more exciting than that. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh funny. My God. Well, I feel like I, I feel like Jack. I feel like Jack Hermanson probably gonna bring the fight to to Derek because Derek is the kind of guy who be kind of trying to grab you the whole time, and if he's not grabbing you, then he ain't doing nothing. Yeah. So and he's coming off that nasty I, KO. Yeah. By Jared. I feel like I feel like Jack might bring the fight. Jack might bring the fight. He's trying to get a. It, it'd be the fights. It'd be the fights that you don't think will be like sparks flying that actually be having the sparks fly, I notice. I yeah. Yeah. Your but man Tai Tuivasa is the second most exciting guy in all MMA. Love him. Tai Tuivasa brings him. that fire. He is every the fight. second most exciting guy every fight. in the MMA behind Who's Iron number one? Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler, Chandler man. That man new... brings the Must fire. Must TV. My yeah. CTV, I don't agree. Don't blink. I agree. Don't fucking blink. Yeah. Your man throws so, every punch a thousand percent. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Next week, like I said, um, we'll hop on and we'll look forward to this card because this card is absolutely amazing. It, like, it's better than what I thought it was. Like, now I'm looking at it. I'm like, shit, that's a fight night? Like, no wonder they bring in that yeah. to Orlando like that. So that's cool. <laughs> but anyways, you know. Stay healthy, stay blessed, get wealth, all that good stuff, and uh, we're out.
Peace. Later.